Hey folks, it's the best of fly here, hope you're well and a very good morning to you. It's uh, bright and early, it's uh, 8.20, well about 8.20 at the moment, which isn't the time I'm newsly up on a Saturday morning and you join me in North Wales. I'm just near Wrexham actually, because today what I'm going to be doing is spending the day on patrol with the North Wales Police. It's going to be amazing. I'm uh, going to learn all about the police bikes, what they do, what a typical day I hope in a police biker's life is about and also go out on patrol with them as well. So uh, if you're interested in that, stick around and stay tuned. Let's see what the day brings. So how lucky am I to be uh, invited up to North Wales to spend the day with the biker cops? It should be great. I'm meeting up with uh, Sergeant Lee Evans and his colleagues today and uh, really looking forward to what the day is going to bring. What I'm going to do is uh, obviously bring you highlights of the day out on the road, uh, bits and pieces that we get up to. But also, uh, before I came up, I asked my patrons for any questions they might have of the police, in particular relating to motorcycling, because of course Wales is a motorcycling mecca. We're uh, going to be heading to Snowdonia a bit later today, I think. And I've got loads of questions to put to the police from you guys as well. So thank you very much indeed if you sent me uh, a question. I'll try and get through as many as I can. And what I'll do is intersperse the video with your questions as we go, just to keep it nice and interesting. So uh, there'll be a bit of riding, a bit of patrolling, and a question, and then a bit of right, you know, you get you get the idea. Anyway, I'm heading up to Police HQ in uh, Wrexham. I'll speak to you when I get there. Alrighty, it's around here somewhere, I think. Somewhere that looks like Police HQ, hello. What about down here? Aha, that looks like a cop. This must be HQ. That'll be our man. I do love a police escort. Excellent. How cool is that? It's just started to rain. Hopefully we can get inside for a cuppa before we get wet. I had enough of that yesterday coming up here. Five hours on the motorway, absolutely drenched. Blimey. This is where it all happens. Morning, Lee. Yeah, very good. Thanks, you. Yeah. Where do you want me? Back there? Yeah, Stick it back there. Okay, so here I am at the uh, police HQ in Wrexham with Sergeant Lee Evans. Hi, Lee. Nice morning. to meet you. Morning, Andy. Thank, Thank you, you very too. much for having me. No problem at all. Thanks Thank for you for arranging sunshine. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's not quite worked. <laughs> anyway, it was a lot worse yesterday, and we're hopeful it's going to pick up. So first things first, let's go and get a brew, shall we? Absolutely, let's do it. Okay, so we're within the uh, hallowed halls of the HQ now. You see it's absolutely rammed in here, busy with... Actually, I'm sure all the cops are out policing. Anyway, we're here now with, uh, this is Owain, I've got to make sure I pronounce that right. Can we see you there? Yeah. There you go. And, uh, and we've still got Lee as well. And we thought what we'd do is a few questions from patrons uh, while we're just enjoying a brew. So uh, let me get those and let's crack on. Okay, so in no particular order, I don't know who wants to uh, answer these in particular, but the first question I've got here is from uh, David Bukoltz. I'm, uh, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, sorry if I'm not David. And his question is, I'd be interested to know what particularly perks police interest in a particular bike? Is it riding style, speed or noise? And I guess he means rider as opposed to bike. But what makes you look at a particular biker? Um, yeah, it's, it's a combination of things usually. <coughs> um, so if you've got a, for example, a really expensive sports bike that comes through and the rider hasn't got the correct kit on, or they are particularly young for that sort of bike, you know, Something might just think mm, that's probably worth a, a stop. Has it been stolen? Has it been cloned or something like that? Um, so that's one of the reasons I would look at. Um, it's, it's hard to quantify, isn't it, really, about what you would do. It's just something. You get a feeling for bikes that don't like quite right in the right area, the right location or, or yeah. the right person on it. And I suppose after a, a, a few years of policing, and you were telling me earlier you've been in a cop for a long time now, yeah. you just get a bit of a, a copper's nose, I assume, do you? Yeah, absolutely. There's a there's a feeling, isn't there? I mean, I've only been in six years, um, but I think you you soon get a feeling for for what's right, what's not right on the road, and um, they're always worth a stop. And um, yeah, usually if it's just a, a little thing, um, sometimes you can come to to big things of no licences, no insurance, etc. Just from little things like a, a brake light out, etc. Real. Okay, there you go, David. Hope that answers the question. Okay, another question. This one from Marcus West. He asks, uh, what are your views on filtering and stopping in the front of cars at red lights? At my bike safe course, that was left a bit unclear. Who fancies that one? Oh, I'm 
Yeah, Go for it. <laughs> yeah, so as a, as a police bike, it's something I do regularly. Um, it remains legal. Um, there's no great issues with um, filtering as long as it's done in a safe and appropriate manner. Um, the speed's got to be correct, I think. It's got to be done in the correct location, i.e. the road markings, etc. allow it. Um, and you've just got to be aware that sometimes cars just don't see us as bikers. So you've got to be aware that if you're going to do it, make sure that you're, you're quite visible. Um, and specifically... Um, uh, Mark has asked, what, is the, what about uh, going up to the front at red lights? I mean, often at, where you have these temporary traffic lights uh, and at road work and stuff, I always go up the outside and get to the front because you can get away quicker. Is there any reason why you shouldn't do that? I don't think there's any reason why not. Again, I think a bit of caution. Um, you know, you've got to time it correctly, haven't you? Because if you're sort of on the offside and then your traffic light turns green, then you may find yourself in a bit of hot water where cars pulling out in front of you, not necessarily look into that offside mirror. So I'd say, again, fine, no issues, just treat it with a bit of caution. And what about um, speeds of filtering as well? I was doing a lot of filtering coming up here yesterday uh, and I was on a motorway, so the speeds can creep up, can't they? And, uh, you know, I, I got to, there were points when I looked there and I was like filtering at 40, I thought, hang on, I need to slow down. Is there like a maximum speed that you'd recommend you should be filtering or a maximum speed above the, the cars that you're filtering past? I think um, to most riders it, be, it, it would feel right. I think the highway code suggests something like 20 mile an hour is uh, the maximum speed that's recommended anyway to do so. And I think anything above that starts getting a bit dangerous where speed carries up and then people aren't necessarily sort of checking where the bikers are there or not, not expecting bikers maybe. So I'd say about 20. Splendid. Thank you Marcus for the question. Right, so we've uh, had a bit of a brew. Uh, we're going to go and take a look at the bikes, aren't we? To have a look at the kit that you've got, see what the differences yep. are between the normal bikes and cop bikes. Should be interesting, let's go. Right, we're at the bike garage. This is where the exciting stuff is. There's my uh, rather cruddy looking GS. I do apologise for the amount of dirt on it. You never see it like that. Ooh, some Honda CRFs, excellent. Yeah, so you've got the uh, CRF 250s. Um, we've got the unmarked BMW RS um, 1250. We've got a RT1250 and then the RT1200 as well, which is the bike that we'll be going on. So today. is this the complete fleet for North Wales Police or uh, some out? Or? This is the complete fleet for the eastern side of the force. You've got um, another bike in the central side and then a few more bikes, uh, including an unmarked bike in the western side of the force. So we've got quite a few in total. Okay, so an opportune question from Ben Smith. He says, I would like to know what tools and equipment the police carry in those panniers, please. Well, we've come to the right place. Over to you. Yeah, sure. So the panniers you're talking about, the uh, 20 litre panniers we've got on the Mark bikes here that um, come obviously fitted on the bike. Within those panniers, I carry, generally speaking, a first aid kit, um, a speed camera, a laser detection device, a traffic offence report book, um, a tyre depth gauge that's calibrated, a tyre pressure gauge, uh, measuring um, tape, I've got police tape if I need to close off a scene, I've got my laptop over there um, and a uh, waterproof pad underneath, I've got the breathalyzer kit with some drug swipes in, I've got some spare reports should I need them and hopefully that all fits in along with the chalk in the uh, waterproof bag I've got down here. So we've got uh, Owen up front on the bike and then behind us we've got uh, the other guys in the car just in case a shout kicks off while we're out then uh, Owen on the bike can go and deal with it and then I can hang back with the other guys. So the plan for today is, uh, well the plan right now is to go and find some breakfast up at the Ponderosa, a nice ride up there into Snowdonia, show you some of the roads that are around here. As you can see the weather's unfortunately not playing great ball as it were with us today it's a bit uh, cold and drizzly at the moment so we're not anticipating lots of bikers out and about so we'll see what happens but at least we'll get some nice riding and learn a bit about uh, being a police biker oh what an absolute treat it is to be riding in Wales once again even though the weather isn't great Wales always delivers and uh, we're not even in the picturesque and scenic stuff yet, but it's just so lovely to be out on the bike again after such a long break. And so great to be on the trusty GS as well. I was in two minds whether to bring this or to bring the gold wing. I'm still in the sort of novelty phase with the gold wing and it's uh, a great comfortable bike for long trips. As I mentioned, it was a five hour ride up here in scuddy rain in busy motorways yesterday. So not a fun trip up here by any means, but uh, 
being on the Beamer again, it just made me realise how good this bike is. For trips and tours one up, I think it's quite hard to beat. So I must just take this opportunity to uh, thank very much indeed the guys at North Wales Police for having me along to make these uh, videos. It's very kind of them to uh, give up their Saturday to do this for me. Very much appreciated guys. It's a weird thing isn't it, I tend to try and be a law abiding citizen, I've never had any issues ever with the police, they've always been uh, very nice to me and uh, you know, if I'm going to do anything dodgy, I try and do it while the police aren't watching. <laughs> Even though I've never had any problem with the police, there's something weird about riding this close to a police motorcyclist, isn't there? I'm not doing anything wrong. He's a nice guy. Yeah, I'm feeling sort of guilty. What is all that about? Is it just me? I think the training that uh, Owen's done has obviously paid off. I, I have this thing where I judge how skillful a biker is by how much I see their brake light going on but uh, Owens isn't going on much at all <laughs> obviously a smooth rider all that training has paid off needless to say if you rode behind me you'd see my brake light going on all the time okay another question this one's from Bob Adam and I've had a few questions on a similar vein this is all about uh, bikers attitude so Bob says I would like to know if the response to a rider has changed due to the rider's attitude and would they target groups of riders rather than the rider out on their own who wants to take this one um, yeah, Lee? Um, I don't think we target groups of riders but I think it's um, it is recognized that when people go out in groups there is this element of the less experienced rider feels the pressure to keep up with the more experienced so Statistics will tell us that groups tend to fall off or someone in that group tends to fall off So we wouldn't target them But if we saw them out we might stop them and have a chat and have a word with Tail and Charlie if you like because they've only been riding for two years where the one at the front is pushing on and they're feeling the pressure and We're all blokes aren't we and we know what it yeah. feels like to yeah. do that um, So yeah, we don't target them, but it is definitely a, an area we recognize as a problem um, Yeah, and if it is a, a a big group of riders, how would you would you just pick one off then, or how, how I mean, how would you actually deal with that if it's just you on a bike and, a, yeah. and say ten riders? How does that work? It's not easy, but um, generally, if you've got people who are decent and they're checking their mirrors, they will get the, the, the impression that you want them all. So perhaps put the blues on, go out and just follow them all and try and get them all in. A few hand signals, perhaps something like that. And nine times out of ten, they'll stop. Most of them will stop and um, tend to have a good conversation with them. Yeah. That's going to make their day. Rid Talog. I must uh, make my excuses now and apologies for my Welsh pronunciations. Whenever I come to Wales and make a video, I always get loads of comments about my mispronunciation of places. So uh, I might as well apologise now in advance to any natives watching this. I am going to get them wrong. You know how tricky your language is for us English people to get our tongues round. I apologise. Okay, another question. There's this one from uh, Philip Kirk. He says, I'm currently reading a small book called Motorcycle Roadcraft, the Police Rider's Manual, which was passed to me from my dad from his ex-police mate. I wonder if the police still use this book today as their go-to guide or training manual. Over to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's almost our um, Bible, so to speak. Um, keep going with it. It's a good read. Um, hard to read at times, hard to make sense of at times, but keep going with it. Um, it's essentially what we tested on throughout our training. Um, there's certainly an exam at the end of our training as to um, what it says in Rosecraft, whether we adhere to that or not. Um, but everything we do as police riders, police drivers, tested by means of Roadcraft basically. Perfect, and uh, I've got a copy of that book as well. If you are a new rider, it's definitely worth riding, in fact, if you're an experienced rider as well. So I'll stick a link below uh, to that book as well. Right, Philip's come back with a cheeky second question. He says, I live near a road uh, known as the Cat and Fiddle Road, named after a now def defunct pub. And the people, we've all ridden that one, we know that one. Um, which has an average speed camera set on 50 miles an hour. I wonder how closely applied these average speed limits are in general, and how much tolerance there is. Is it similar to regular speed cameras? So over to you, Owen. Yeah, um, of course, similar to regular speed cameras. Um, there is a tolerance in place. It's in place for the purpose of um, manufacturers of different vehicles having tolerances in what your speedometer will show on your dashboard, etc., whether that's car or bike. Mm -hmm. um, all I can suggest from that question basically is keep to the speed limit as best you can, um, keep yourself safe, um, and enjoy the ride. So, a little note to self this is the A5104, which looks to be a cracking road. Unfortunately, like uh, one of the questions we had earlier talking about the Cat and Fiddle having a uh, speed limit on it, this is two, this has got a 50 mile an hour speed limit along it, 
and average speed cameras by the looks of it. Mind you, that said, it's fairly twisty. But just a few short miles out of Wrexham and you're already into something that's looking lovely. Not only that, look, it's a blue sky. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, being a bikey cop's not a bad job, is it? I'm sure it has its moments, mind you. I reckon he must have disabled his brake lights. I'm not sure I should have come on at all. Oh, hello. Here's a shout. First one of the day. Let's see what's going on here. But you didn't expect this, I didn't think I was going to have to work for me living. Well, once they get going, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's getting away from us, lads. <laughs> Could have told me you'd stopped. <laughs> so, regular viewer and the contributor Stephen Skip asked, What is the difference between a stock bike and the police bike? So, uh, here we go. This is a uh, BMW RT, isn't it? Uh, BMW RT 1200, this one. Um, obviously, this comes out of the factory in Germany as it is, um, added with a couple of extras for policing purposes. Obviously, uh, you can see blue lights are on there. We've got um, crash barriers, both front and rear, um, along with the air horns. We've got, um, behind the dash here, we've got, um, obviously, our airwave system for comms fitted with these extra bits on the side for sort of the operation of the blue lights and horn system etc. Um, as well as that, under this bit here that you wouldn't get on your stock bike, you've got the comms system um, or sort of gubbins and wiring there um, and the, the aerial that we've got to um, maximise communication of course. And this is this is the 1250, so this is the new RT, correct? Uh, this one particular is the 1200, oh. and the new one here is the 1250 that we've got. So we're running both at the moment. And what sort of churn do you have on box? How how long do you keep them before they get replaced? Uh, so it's more to do with mileage than sort of age. They usually go at about 40, 45,000 miles, so they're quite tired and worn by then. And then what happens to them? Do they get get sold off to as second-hand um, bikes? Or? Yeah, they go to auction basically, um, and I'm sure they get um, something. And, and I think I'm right in saying, aren't I, that these are made on a separate production line at BMW, aren't they? They're called the RTP yeah. or something, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, quite rightly. It's called the RTP and it comes out of Germany or out of um, wherever it's built, sort of, as this bike standard. To my knowledge, we don't add anything, sort of, within our sort of um, policing sort of team. It, it's as it is, it comes out of Germany. Like this. Right, ready when you are. Go for it. So there we go, first shout of the day. <laughs> Lady broken down in the car, just pushed her into the lay-by out the way of the road. All very exciting. And I noticed the way the guy stopped pushing and let me carry on without telling me. Sneaky. My stomach is telling me it's brunch time. So this is the A542, I've got a feeling, just going by the sign, it just might be locally known as the Horseshoe Pass. I'm pretty sure I've heard of that actually. And it is an absolute cracker. Here we are, the Ponderosa Cafe. Heard a lot about this place. But never been. A bit of a biking haunt by looks of it. Oh, 
get nervous doing this when I'm here. <laughs> what am I going to say? Let me think about this. 